Welcome to Shooting the Shift with Marilyn and Elizabeth. These light warriors, both native New Yorkers, walk their walk, talk their talk, and keep the real in the deal. This dynamic duo joined forces to assist you through your transformational journey one step at a time, empowering you with spiritual tools you can use in your daily life. Each show begins as a conversation creating an opening for spiritual connection. There are never any scripts, and spirit is always illuminating the way. And that's when the shift hits the fan. The magical messages of the ancestors, spirit guides, and Gaia are respected, honored, and always given sacred space to communicate. Join Marilyn and Elizabeth as they shake shift up and do what they do best. Speak from their hearts. Welcome, everyone. I'm Marilyn Maldonado with Elizabeth Lindsay, and this is Shooting the Shift. Today's conversation will revolve around the practice of being self-aware. And I feel like it's a really exciting and fantastic day filled with opportunities. So how are you today, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm good, Marilyn. You know, I'm getting on a plane in three days and one or three weeks in one day. I can't even get it out of my mouth. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm good. You know, these these energies in between the two eclipses are just really uh, intense. Are you feeling that? It's a yeah. Bit there's of a, a lot of yeah. It feels like a lot of shifting, actually. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And, but it's not a it's not a bad shifting. It's it feels really mm -hmm. good actually. It's a big yeah. clearing of old old stuff. So I kind of feel like our topic today is perfect because um, self awareness. You know, we it, it, it you don't just decide I'm self aware and then duh you're done. Mm -hmm. You know, there's constant check ins. But I would love for people to. Um, Give us a call if they'd like to, because Marilyn and I both do readings on the air, and we love to interact. If anybody does feel like calling in today, it's 202-570-7057. So for those of you that may listen to us on a regular basis, Miss Marilyn is flying solo in June because I am going to England. And so I'm expecting everybody to show up and send her the best vibes because she's never done that before. So it's, no, how are you it's a little nerve-wracking, right? Yeah. yeah, that piece of it is a little nerve-wracking, but I think I'll, I'll manage fine, uh, you know, once I start talking. I just like the idea of having someone else, right, to, <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> to be speaking with. There you go. There you go. Um, so, man. you know. So there's a little jittery there, you know, there's a little, um, how do you say, like, almost like, well, am I going to be all right doing this? Am I going to, and then I go, just, just be, be yourself just be. and speak from the heart and That's all right. is well, right? And all yes, will be and well. You know what I always tell people, <laughs> anxiety and anticipation feel really similar in our bodies. So just remember that anticipation has a similar feeling, but it's a very different emotion, you know? And I, I know that you're going to be brilliant because you asked for this. <laughs> <laughs> I asked right? and the new universe provided, yes. right? And, right? And, and, and think about the topic of self-awareness, mm -hmm. being self-aware of, you know, what, uh, you're feeling, you know, around different issues and different situations in your life. Because being self-aware yeah. is the ability to distinguish your own beliefs from others. So mm -hmm. there you are. Here I am. I'm going to have to just take the leap of faith in June and just do it on my own. But I'm taking a leap of faith by getting on that plane. And yes. We're both taking leaps of faith in very different ways. But you are walking your walk and talking your talk and shake and shift up. And that's exactly what we do, right? So, yeah. 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 So, I'm because I'm thinking about it and I'm saying, hmm, I just have to remember, right, to, to, um, to ask the question, am I being 
true to myself in this moment. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm speaking and whenever I'm um, participating in different things that I can do that because that is one of the important keys, right, to becoming self-aware. So I of think course. this is a really interesting topic that we're on. <laughs> and, and I and I imagine it will be a very, very different show because you're probably going to do your it girls and your, your singing and your, when you shake and shift the energy and your, all your noises I can't describe that are magical. And, you know, you're probably going to share a lot more of Marilyn, which I think is really lovely because people haven't seen a lot of that. We've seen drips and drabs of it, but not, it's not conducive to two people talking and having a whole, you know, at the end you do a little bit of a prayer and intention. Right. But, I mean, personally, I'll be interested in listening to the shows when I get back. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know it'll be really good because I know you'll have a chance to shine and people will get to get to know you in, in um, a more congruent way. That's more just Marilyn, right? And I'm sure the day will come, maybe, where I will, you know, have to fly solo once or twice myself. Mm -hmm. um, but we really set the show up to, to, to work together. And so far, it has really been an amazing journey. And I think we've learned so many things about ourselves and each other. And the most important thing, just like what you're doing in June, is that we're doing it. <laughs> Right. You can sit there and talk about an idea forever. And I think that's part of personally my self awareness is is lately I go, Oh my gosh, uh I had this intention three years ago. What happened? So then I have to be self aware and go, Does it matter in a year from now? Does it matter anymore? Did what I want change or am I afraid? to do mm. it. So I put it off. Right. So right. all of those things are self-awareness questions that come up when I look at like all of a sudden I'll come across something and I, it's not that I completely forgot about it, but it, it does make me think why, why is so much time gone by? And there's always different reasons for it. You right. know, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I wasn't even doing the same thing I'm doing now five years right. ago. Right. And you might not always have the same answers, you know, exactly. to, to the same questions because you're in a mm -hmm. different, you're in, in a, at a different stage in your life. It's always important for us to recognize um, that if are we, the question also is, are we afraid to make changes? And if we are, Why? Mm -hmm. Right. What is the story behind that? Mm -hmm. And I love what you wrote in our description today about, you know, um, are you ready to look at the story again from a different perspective? Mm -hmm. Because for a long time after I went through my physical stuff and my whole life kind of flip flopped, I was really stuck in that story of, um, the way I thought things were going to unravel versus the way mm. they really unraveled. That's, that's your word, Marilyn, but I stole it because I yeah. like using it. It works <laughs> really good. But, you know, I, I, I think sometimes I was stuck in, in that I needed to write a book and I needed to, for a long time I was writing a book. And, um, you know, now I could care less about writing a book. I don't really care. And I'm sure that that will flip flop again because I have a story I want to share, but right now it's not there. And so for a long time, I thought, well, there's something wrong with me. Why am I not writing? I had this whole, I had a book mm. proposal. I had everything submitted to Hay House. It was looked at by an actual publisher. But the thing is, the story changed and there were things missing from that story, which are still unraveling. Exactly. So, Right. You know, they're still so forming. Just, right. And they're yeah. still forming and they're yeah. still being created. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like, why do I have the rawhide mallet out going? Why aren't you writing your story? Well, because if anybody out there who knows me, if I ain't feeling it, it ain't happening. It doesn't right. matter if it's tying my shoelace or writing a book. I have to have that fire in my belly. And so then I let myself off the hook. And that was all the self-awareness I needed was to go, you know what? 
it's on hold. It's evolving. It's not not happening. Um, yeah. So I think yeah, self-awareness right? is hard because all of us kind of want to stick to our stories. As humans, we get really comfortable in the familiar. I yeah. Do. Yeah, and the story really uh, depends on the narrative, right? Like w we can look at a story and we can say, well, um, this is my experience from, you know, a, a particular time or point in my life. Can I, um, and so how how is this story helping me to, to expand and to grow or to diminish and hide and not be seen because sometimes what happens is that we're living in a story that isn't helping us to expand but it could help us to expand if we were seeing it and experiencing it from a different perspective because it really all has to do with experiences that um, when we experience something you know and this is just the way I think when we experience something the experience is also coming the how we um, experience it has to do with our past not, uh, knowledge. So whatever it was that we have experienced, we're tapping into all of that. And then it's feeding into this experience. And then it becomes this whole story. And the question is, are we going to be able to say, oh, okay, so this is what happened. This is how it happened. This is how I felt this is how I still feel. Mm -hmm. And this is my understanding of this story. And now can we, after that, can we now take that same story mm -hmm. and see it from a different viewpoint? And sometimes what happens is that we may need another person also, right? To help us mm -hmm. to listen to the story and maybe even to give us a different perspective, a different way of seeing it, a different way of experiencing it. And in that interaction, we end up with our own medicine from this story, not because of the description that that other person gave us, but because now we're hearing it from a different perspective. And now we're tuning into the frequencies of that perspective and the perspective that we had at the time. And that starts to shift and to change the story in a different way, where now we can say, what have I learned from this experience about myself, where I am the strongest, where I don't learn to stand up for myself, where I retreat. I mean, all these questions, because when we're able to ask questions of ourselves about our story or about our experiences in the very moment, it helps us to better understand our feelings around it, our emotions around it. Mm. You know, we can get, you know, it, 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 to get in touch with our inner self and, and to assess our behavior, we can ask questions like, why did I lose my temper? What situations make me feel terrible? What kind of a person do I want to be today? Even, even a question like that can stir up the thinking process and help us to be more aware in our lives, in our mm -hmm. daily lives, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh as a you know an energy worker and somebody that works with people getting them on the next step um sometimes i have to i and even in my personal relationships i have to really step back and go just because i can see this and just because it's for the highest good um and it's coming from a good place doesn't mean that this person is ready or capable to see what I see. And that's right. true for myself too. You know, I mean, for everybody, I'm, not, I'm sure there's other people that see that about me. And, um, you know, but I know as, you know, whatever God is counselor, whatever my title is this week, <laughs> that I, it's, it's only my job to illuminate. And then I have to receive the information or the energy that I feel if somebody isn't ready you know, 
And, right. and, and I've known right. sometimes I've pushed a little harder just because I'm such a little fire spark. You know, it's, that's the way I am. And so that's taught me about my own self-awareness about how I go in, you know, and be more conscious of, okay, maybe you need to, you know, put on the light silk satin lavender <laughs> gloves and be a little more gentle and, you know, seriously, because I, well, no, we can't can push like a bulldozer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the truth is, is that when people aren't ready, mm. it, there's no amount of pushing, shoving, tugging, mm. you know, that's going to make people get there. What's going to happen though, is, is with all of that pushing, shoving and forcing is going to, create it's going to make it harder for that person because they're going to feel some some, one way or another traumatized by the whole experience because they aren't ready and it's Mm -hmm. not our I, I believe this is okay this is me speaking it's not our place I could see such beauty and I could see oh my god I can see amazing experiences for someone I can actually see that for someone but it doesn't mean that they are um, ready to step into it. It's just my vision of what I can see for, you know, in the, in the, it could be in their immediate future, but it could be, you know, their future several years from now because we have to grow, but in our growing, we're stretching, we're expanding, we are becoming, and we are learning things. And sometimes the big piece to learn is, is that we don't know everything and there are so many things that we don't know that we aren't even aware of. You know, I always say I don't know anything because even when I find out other things, Things, then it brings up more questions. And then I'm like, now I have more questions around the things that I thought that I knew that are shifting and changing because we are evolving. Yeah, we're always evolving. Even when we think we're not evolving, we're still evolving in the unevolving process. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, when I get, I get a lot of people go, when is this going to end? I'm like, well, it's not going to end. It's just going to evolve into something else. There's not a destination point here. Right. And we've talked about that too. You know, you people want to be fixed. You know, it's like, I can't fix you. I can show you the next breadcrumb. That That's like, you know, that's the best it gets for me. Like, I don't... When, I'm not someone who predicts the future down the road. You know, five years from now, you're going to have two children and you're going to live in, you know, Whitestone. That's just not how I read. I don't know how people do that. I know there are people out there that are very accurate that can't. That is not my gift. But it took me a while to figure out what are my gifts and what are not my gifts. And I know one of my gifts is this is your next spiritual breadcrumb. You can embrace this. You have a choice. I can't tell you what to do. I can only show you what I sense and feel, right? And that's when the fixing comes in for other people. Because if you want to fix yourself, if you want to use that word, if you want to heal yourself, if you want to get to the next level, if you want to unravel the next layer, you are the one embarking. You are Indiana Jones with that torch in the dark (laughs) tomb heading down the tunnel, you're the one, right? So yeah, we, in this society, and we talked a lot about this, you and I last week privately, but in this society, we become quite complacent. You know, there's a pill for this, there's this for that. There's, you know, distractions on the news. And it's very easy to become complacent in this world and lose your voice. Different topic, but, um, you know, this is... An but apartment. sometimes what, yeah, but sometimes what happens is... is it's the journey of finding your voice. It's exactly. the journey of understanding who you are and, and what you're about. And really, this is, uh, this is our mission. This is our mission to find ourselves back again, to rediscover. To back again after the break because yes. we're supposed to be going to a break right now. <laughs> yes. I'm sure our we'll producer be back. is laughing at us. Yes, we will be right back. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Welcome back to Shooting the Shift with Marilyn and Elizabeth. We're so happy that you've joined us today. In the midst, in between these two massive eclipses that are all about worth and value. And, you know, uh, building your future with the richness of what you want in your life. And what could be more important than to ponder on how you're showing up with your story and how you're empowering yourself with your story and how you're changing your story. Because truly, the only way we can do that is with our intention and with our vision and having a vision for what we want for ourselves. And you know what? I don't know about you out there listening, but I know Miss Marilyn agrees with me. Time is now, people. We have not got any more time to waste as far as embarking on the next intentional moving forward. There's never a better moment than right now, because what you be, you become. So, yeah, um, I've had a really, really hard time staying grounded lately, Marilyn. I don't know about you. I am excited about a trip, a, a bucket list trip, so that could be part of it. But I am finding that I literally need to go out and put my feet on the earth like three times a day now and kind of just shake things off and recenter myself. And um, that that has been helpful, but I'm still feeling like I, I need to go back out there. <laughs> Maybe I need to dance under the moon. I don't know. But grounding has been, It is. it just feels like there's new energies coming in and there's a lot of adjustment going on and so yeah so this would be this is a perfect time right for us to become mm -hmm. more self-aware of mm -hmm. ourselves our of our interactions of our mm -hmm. feelings around um you know people places and things all of these you know things are important for us so mm -hmm. you know i, I think i start to think sometimes about how important it is to Ask yourself questions. I do that a lot. And, you know, I used to say, boy, oh boy, if somebody would have listened to you, <laughs> right? But it has to do with, I, I, I was always asking myself questions about how things were affecting me and how I was managing them or not. Because... We can learn a lot about ourselves if we tune in to our responses uh, around different issues uh, mm -hmm. that are, you know, that, that we are interacting with daily. And we get to understand what are the things that we are very uncomfortable with. I'll you know, maybe somebody right not feeling, maybe, maybe the energy of somebody not feeling um well, we can feel something like I know that I've always been that person and I could always feel 
uh, the, 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 the energy that maybe is surging that doesn't feel so good to me. But at the yeah. same time, I recognize that it isn't mine. That's but I also, look, I also look at it and, and see it as, well, you're feeling it. So what is it waking up in you? Mm-hmm. Is it waking up in you um, the, the, the spirit of maybe you are too um, outspoken? Uh, maybe you should bring Girl, that you back. Are or the nail on the head right there because my whole life I have been the girl that, you know, the elephant is in the room. Why are you ignoring the elephant in the room? I've always been the truth sayer and I've, I've always ruffled feathers and people don't like the truth. A lot of people don't like the truth. My family did not like the truth. And uh, little me, Spitfire, talking the truth. I but it comes so back much- around though. Think about that for yourself. When right. you when we when we're doing that activity, yeah, it's one thing. But then when we're receiving it, <laughs> it's a different thing, right? When we're yeah. receiving it from someone else, it's a different. We we take it in differently. You you yeah. know what I'm saying by that? Yeah. Well, I, the point I was going to get to is that like my worth and value really came up in all of that because I felt that there was something wrong with me, that I was difficult or that I was um, too honest or, you know, whatever my things were. We all have our things, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, I realized it's how it's delivered and who it's delivered to and when it's delivered, the truth. But I will always be a truth sayer. And when I read things and felt things that other people felt from doing that, I wasn't wrong. I just didn't have anybody to show me, yeah, you're an empath and you can feel these things. And you know yes. that you're getting darts because you're revealing something somebody doesn't want addressed. And right. that has been one of my stories my whole life. Now, yeah. I have evolved from that into my own power and I can be much more conscious about how I deliver, but I also know sometimes the truth hurts and the intention is never to hurt with the truth, but I will always stand with the truth. That has been, and I, I don't think I ever will not be a truth sayer. Yeah. And I think what happens is sometimes people are in different, um, um, they, they are, they are actually, dealing with different, so many different things that even when you Mm -hmm. say something, because there's so much on the plate that I can't, I can't master that right now. Like I cannot master Mm -hmm. that. That is just one too many things to, um, to, for me to shove down. And sometimes, and this is where I say, okay, now this is where we become self-aware because now if we can say, oh, I'm at that point where this is just one too many things. Then mm-hmm. I am becoming self-aware if I am able to say that and then to work on it. Because what I'm saying really and truly is that I am ab- absorbing way too much. And I really need to just observe things and not Mm -hmm. absorb them and be able to see it again from a different perspective, from a different understanding, from different possibilities, because there are so many probabilities, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to be able to, it's almost like we just have to shift and and shake and, and just move things around in such a way where then we can feel more comfortable in our own energy. And uh, the reason why we feel bombarded sometimes is because we're taking on too much. And sometimes we're taking on other people's stuff. And it's time okay. for us to become aware of, you know, if somebody has a different opinion than me, I'm okay with that. I'll listen. I will listen. I I really believe that everybody has the right to their opinion and their belief systems and it's okay, but I will not. Also, you listen and you really listen. You don't just listen waiting so that you can over talk them. That's a big difference. Yes. Yeah. And that's important, right? Because if we don't do that, then we get lost because now we're lost in our own head and our own thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and that's sorry, important. Sorry, I distracted you from your little stream there. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Because we can always take another route. See? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not fixed. I'm not fixed on any particular route. I just go wherever mm. we, we need to go. Because it, mm. when we learn to do that, when mm. we're able to say, oh, okay, so this is now we're on a different f wavelength. We're on a different yeah. frequency. This is a whole different storyline. Okay, so then, mm -hmm. the, the, then we're moving in that direction. And I believe that a lot of times what happens is when we allow that, when we don't force conversations so we don't force certain things to be and we just flow with ease and grace into the next mm -hmm. moment we really are in the place of sourcing right from a place of the what i call the known the wisdom within us all well i think that's really a sign of the times i mean first of all we're in a big we're in Aquarius energy we are in the age of Aquarius we all grew up listening to that song well now it's here <laughs> and they used to sing it all the time <laughs> energy this is new thinking this is you know the dark ages of Pisces are over and in innovation is here that's why AI is so big right now um, but it is true we need to be adaptable and flexible to everything that comes right now because the more fixed we are this Taurus is very fixed energy mm. you know it's the mm. bull I'm grounded I'm uh, there's something in front of me I want to jump into and you know it's it's very fixed and the more we can stay flexible and adaptable and you know one of the best things for my go-to mama Louise Hay I miss her every day bless her heart you know um Whatever comes my way, I know the universe is conspiring for me. You know, if we can have that attitude of, okay, I didn't plan this. There's a little blip in the radar. But you know what? It's okay. I got this. Yeah. I can handle whatever comes my way. Look at all the crap I've been through. And you think I can't handle this thing? Huh. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, just remember this. Every single one of you out there. What you have survived up to this point. Nobody's gotten unscathed. And if you can remember the big stuff, this, you know, it's not so hard to go, I can do this. I, I got this. I got it in me. I know I can do it. Yeah, because we are stronger than we know. We are That's stronger right. than we know. And there's so much more that we haven't even tapped into. We just haven't tapped into it because we keep ourselves sometimes so busy and so unaware that things are like, it, it's like information can be uh, being downloaded and you just, it's, it's okay. You're still stuck on a particular story or the, you know, or a particular issue and you just can't let it go. You're wrestling that to, to the end, you know, you just, you, mm -hmm. you got to win this, you know, mm -hmm. and the truth is, oh, is that nobody yes. wins, no. how we win, how we mm -hmm. win is when we're able to continuously go inward and recognize mm -hmm. where certain things don't feel balanced within us. When we can say, wow, this doesn't feel, this doesn't feel like me and it doesn't feel healthy and I'm not feeling so good, then we have to be able to say, what is this? What is this that is resonating, that is being activated in me so that I can take a closer look? Yeah. I had so much cleanup to do, like, especially when I look back, what you just made me think of, I don't want to say trigger, because you didn't really trigger me, but you kind of clicked on something there. And in my history of, you know, my 30s and all my relationships, like where I would replay the conversation at three in the morning, and I couldn't sleep. And if only I'd said this, and only if I'd done that, and I'm in such fight mode. Mm -hmm. And I and I and but I was so trapped in needing to be right and defend myself, that I festered and festered and festered until I finally got so exhausted and sick of that, that it, it did unravel itself from my own awareness. Now, albeit it took several years for me to get, you're not fisty cupping with anybody but yourself in the middle yeah. of the night and robbing yourself of your need to be right. Why do you need to be right? Or why do you need to be heard? 
where is that wound, right? Right, right. And how about, about how about the experience of that other person? Like, mm-hmm. like a lot of times we're so busy um, re-experiencing uh, what we believed happened and how it happened and whatever the course may be. It could have been an argument that you had with somebody. And this is where I'm at right now, thinking about that. Not thinking about, you know, atrocities or anything like that. I'm talking about a conversation that you had that was like, whoa, over the top, that like it got you. And you got so triggered that it's just like all over the place. And and you're right no matter what. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. And you will beat this dead horse until it, 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 it's right. just dead already. But you're beating it down because you want and need to be right over everything. So it's important for us to be able to say hold on a minute, hold on, can I see it from this other person's perspective? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be that person. It could be from anyone else's Mm -hmm. perspective other than ours because it shifts and it changes because my experiences were my experiences and what I believe and what my belief systems are behind all of that, right, carries a lot. But your beliefs are the same. They're around your own experiences and your own stuff. And so we may be looking at the same situation and evaluating it very differently based on our experiences in this lifetime. So it's important to get that other perspective to look at it, to look at it from there. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't even think it's this lifetime. I think it's lifetimes lifetimes of baggage that we experience and it probably is we're lifetimes trying to of empower baggage ourselves now yeah you know, that's coming up to get us those little bits of power back and our truth back and evolve and unravel and so right but it's also what's happening break yeah <laughs> okay <Marilyn. laughs> it's okay I'm try to keep us in check because we were so late <laughs> on the first one so we'll yeah. be right back and stay tuned Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Imagine yourself being transported to India to the banks of the Ganga and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Sattvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. I have to say, I like that commercial. I hadn't heard that commercial before about walk a mile in my shoes. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things that um, really being being made to sit still for nearly three years and and get well and shut up and be with myself. What really, really, really that I learned part in that journey. One of my biggest lessons was I. Nobody knows anything about anybody. We can feel, we can sense, we can try, we can be, have compassion. But we're never going to know that person's entire story. I mean, it's just like your sibling. Your sibling may be the one person in your life that knows more than anything about your life when you were young because they grew up with you. But they still are a completely different person and they interpreted things their own way. And they still don't know the whole story either. That's right. Of course not. And and the biggest freedom that I find are the two biggest freedoms that I find are one, 
I have no idea what this person is going through or how they're interpreting this. And two, in the end, it's always between God and my soul source self, not between them and that and the other person. And that doesn't mean, oh, I don't need to worry about how I treat them and take no accountability. It means that when something happens in between two people, uh, it's always there. I don't believe there are mistakes. I just don't. I, I believe in the good and the bad always happens for a reason to help us evolve. We're here for the experience. And so when I come from that perspective and I still get caught, I still get triggered, I still stumble, trip over my tongue, you know, all those things. But I get better at it every day. Just a teeny tiny earthworm bit. <laughs> so <laughs> that has been that has been a big thing for me in the last five years. Because Honestly, it sets you free. It gives you some freedom to not want to have that 3 a.m. conversation or stick to being right or needing to be heard or whatever it is you feel like your needs are not being met. It, it does, for me, transform it a little bit. It makes it softer. It makes it easier. So that is just my little 411 tidbit of the day. Yeah, it's learning from your experiences, but it's also you having a better understanding of how you feel in diff, you know, in different experiences. This is important. We need to be aware of these things because if we are aware of that, then what happens is that once we're aware of it, then we don't put ourselves in certain situations or we don't linger in certain, you know, conversations that we know aren't going to uh, be of service for for our own um, self. So these or are things a that trigger that you're hot on that you know is going to trigger you because you've yeah. got an emotional attachment to it. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I'm all for the trigger because I really believe mm -hmm. that I know. I, I'm so excited over Maryland. the trigger because, <laughs> yeah, because I really feel <laughs> that I have learned so much from being triggered. I have learned so much. And I have learned so much from triggering other people because I am able to see their reaction and their reactive self as well as my reaction and reactive self. And then I'm able to dive deep and say, whoa, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And what was I feeling in that moment mm -hmm. that I reacted or that I felt so hurt by that response or from that reaction that puts us back in touch with who we are at the and core empowerment. Yes. You know, and then we begin empowering. to, yeah. And then we begin to be able to empower ourselves mm -hmm. because we understand ourselves. The more that we become self-aware, then the more we take better care of ourselves and then we love ourselves more mm. we nurture ourselves more we don't put ourselves in situations that are you know just not good for us and it's happened to last week we are being proactive not mm -hmm. reactive as right. often mm -hmm. right right and then if we are reactive, but we are reactive in a very healthy way, because there are ways to be reactive in very healthy right. ways. That's right. Um, it's not about not speaking your truth. It's yeah. not about denying what you feel. Uh, that's, yeah, that's absolutely Yeah, it's always important to be able to express your feelings when, it's, when you know that it's necessary for someone to understand, that's because... Just because I love you doesn't mean that I know how you feel about mm -hmm. things. There are those things that I may not know, or I might believe a certain way. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute, that got her a certain way. And so yeah. now I need and to. Just because I love you doesn't mean I like you right now very much. Either. <laughs> I mean, that's yes. okay. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. And that is you're, okay. You're real in the deal. 
Yeah. You know, you're not going to like everybody at every moment. I remember Dr. Phil saying, if I'm not a Dr. Phil quoter, I just remember this and it always stuck with me. So there must be some truth to it. You know, talking about a life partner. And he's like, if you can find somebody you love and you like 80% of them, you're doing good, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I think that that's really true because we have this concept in our, it's just going to be my perfect person and they're just going to be everything I need and nobody can be everything you need. Even you can't be everything you need. And I was just going to say that even we can't, even we can't (laughs) get to that place. So how can we put that onto another human? And then when we do that, yeah, but when we do that, then it makes it even more difficult to find that person that you would just, that you want in your life. And simply because they have to check all the boxes. If they don't check all the boxes, then that's it. Out, be gone, that doesn't work. No, I think that we, it's important to have someone who also can have stimulating conversations where maybe you can kind of rattle a little feather here and there, you know, not aggressive because I'm not into that, not aggressive, but, 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 you know, but that there's a different, yeah, none of that stuff for me, girl. No, but you know, uh, but you, you know, you think about all these things. I used to run in heels. Are you kidding me? I know you. I was that girl that could run in heels. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's important. And run too. Yeah. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's important for us to recognize that when we have such um, rigid expectations, right? Because I think they're rigid because they're fixed in place. And this is, you have to look like this. You have to be like this. You have to act like this. You have to think like this. You, you have, have to, to feel this like this. You have money. to, you have to drive oh this my car. God, this house, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so the important piece here is going back to the self-awareness is yeah. this that if you believe that that's how you're thinking, you know, processes, then let's start asking the questions, you know, about the situations that we're in and why we're in them. And, you know, the kind of person that maybe you want to be today, who, you know, what kind of person do I want to be today in the world? How do I want to show up in the world? How do I show up in the world? Right. And how, how accepting am I I of other people? Yes. And you know, do I want to go put my head on the pillow and have a clear conscious and know I did my best that I could do my best in not perfection, but evaluating myself so that I'm showing up to be the best person I can, not just for everyone else, but for myself. Yeah. And the other thing is that I want people, yeah. And I want people to understand that it's okay because you, you, you're you talking about this. And I was like, yeah, yes, exactly. Because sometimes, sometimes we need to say what we need to say. Mm-hmm. And holding it back is just really, cover, you know, just keeping yourself in a place where you, you feel that you cannot be completely who you are. Because really, that's what we're doing. I mean, I did that yes. for so many years, you know, where, I mean, I did, I spoke out for other people, but I really yes. didn't do that for myself. I was one of those people that uh, I could defend you to the end, to the end. But, you know, when yeah. it came to me, I did that, you know, maybe we can just not, mm-hmm. you know, say, you know, or if I thought that I needed to say certain things, Make I would say nice. them because they would... Yeah, because it was necessary. Yes. I always believed that it was more about a teaching. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand it at the time, but I think that that was me, you know, making sure that you heard what you needed to hear because somehow you were disconnected from what you were doing. And you, I wanted you to be in the understanding of what you're doing, you know, so... Uh, and, and that's when I'm I'm talking about when I would stand up and, and say the things I had to say to people because they were doing things that I believed mm-hmm. was so wrong that I couldn't mm-hmm. walk away from. But I felt, you know, in thinking on that, I think back and I'm like, oh, that's what you were doing, really? You were really mm-hmm. bringing them back to this conscious place of, are you listening to yourself? And do you mm-hmm. understand that your words 
have a certain, you know, feeling, uh, you know, towards another person and you are yeah, violating that. Yeah. yeah. And so that is so, uh, so, imp- you know, I just got that while I was talking to you. I, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Oh, but yeah. Started. Marilyn had right? an open moment. There you go. I had the aha <laughs> moment of, oh, that's yeah. what was happening. You weren't mm-hmm. really aware, but that was what was happening. Because sometimes people will say things and they're so detached. Mm -hmm. They're so detached Mm -hmm. to how it's going to land on another person. And it's important for us to recognize how it lands. Yes. Well, that's exactly right. And that's why we're going to, in July, believe it or not, when I get back, because we're working on July now, we're going to have a whole show on expectations. Because expectations, self-expectations, expectations of other, all the expectations, mm-hmm. that's just a whole big mixed up boundaryless little container of smorgasbord there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, practicing self-aware. So if we're going to do that, then take yeah. chances, right? To change mm-hmm. things. Focus some on the, the present and that- not the future. Yeah, some of the things that have tripped me up the most was I had an expectation of how something was going to go or what somebody was going to say or, and all of this is in my little two feet, uh, sorry, two inches, or I don't know how big your brain is, (laughs) six inch square space uh, of real estate that I decided how something was going to go. And then... That is not being self-aware. That is being ego-based and saying, this is exactly how I see everything going. Well, okay, well, get off your high horse now because <laughs> the world's going to have other plans, right? I, that, yeah, so now I'm having my light bulb moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Right? right. So create your special moments, right? Create those special Mm -hmm. moments. Learn to take criticism without getting defensive. Learn to do Mm -hmm. that. That's really important because that's when we learn. (gasps) When we say, wow. Wow. Yeah, my goodness. What? Sarcastic. Like, what? I'm not perfect. I mean, yeah. I'm always, I am always willing to be wrong. I am. I'm, if you say to me, well, this and this and this, I'll go, Wow, you know, I really, I had no idea. I wasn't even seeing it that way. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I'm being, get it. I told, yes. Yeah, I'm being I willing to apologize. I time to see that they're wrong. Mm. Why? Why is that? Why do we need to be right all the time? That's a biggie. That's a real biggie. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I'm willing yeah. to be wrong. And you know what? I learn a lot of things from being wrong. And if I take the perspective of I'm learning something by it's not going the way I thought it was. Yes. Versus I'm right and that's it. And yes. you know, seal the safe. I'm perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I'm such on. a great believer. Lives. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. a great believer in the I'm learning. I'm learning. And, you know, that has mm-hmm. become my mantra because you know, I am learning. I I am a work in progress. And the fact that I can say to myself and feel it within me as my truth, because that's another thing, you know, we can say the words, but if they're not matching up, if they don't feel right, if the frequency doesn't yeah. match us, then it's not, then it's not giving us anything. We're just yeah. uttering words and we're not really yeah. connecting to them. So it's important for us when we say those things, like when I say I am learning, I really fully, 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 I'm bathed in that energy because I truly believe that that also helps me to not be so afraid because fear is usually fear of the unknown, right? Or yeah. what, what, what we well, haven't experienced yet. That's what I was going to say. As a medium, I have to be willing to be wrong because I'm interpreting something coming through that is, there's a lot of yeah. gray. There's a lot of interpretation. And so if I'm not willing to be wrong, I, mean, I, I should have no business trying to dive into that. Yeah, so and I don't, and when I do. time. Oh, Oh, well, we have, I think, three minutes, right? Yeah. 
I know. It so just yeah, seems so fast. Yeah, because you brought that up, and I'm thinking, yeah, when I do my work, I am in full trust of the information yes. that comes through. I will not mm -hmm. question it. I will mm -hmm. just deliver it. And when I do that, it is so on point. I remember when I started, I used to hold back and I used to like try to, you know, not maybe say the things that in the way that I needed to say them. And it, it just didn't work, right? Because the information wasn't clear enough. And it's important for it to be the frequency of the person connected to the frequency of you and the source that's coming through with it. So that's a beautiful, yeah. you know, processing. You, so let's be self-aware. <laughs> yeah, you also have to, you also have a right being self-aware to say, this is enough, this is not for me. You can step back. I'm gonna yes. step back. The, I'm, I have no, I have no animosity, but I don't want to move Yeah. On. Yeah. All right, speaking of moving on, we're gonna move on. And enjoy your lives. Yeah. Peace and blessings. See you next week. Blessings, love, and light, everybody. Mm -hmm.